Raiders on the road to take on the Orange. And uh, nice, uh, you know, nice contract extension for Coach Rangel after that. Well uh, rewarded for a terrific season, and we talked about it. This is a very seasoned group. The core has been together for three years, and Tom, all all five starters. I mean, they're all averaging double figures, and that's where most of the Raiders' offense comes from. Lee Cassell, Mike Roberts, Trace Styons, our officials tonight. The long rebound kept alive by the Raiders. It'll foul on the play. Well, and that's a, this is a team. For Colgate, half, half their field goal attempts are threes. So there are going to be a lot of long rebounds in this game. And the Orange, the perimeter guys are going to have to hang in there for those long rebounds. Mike, let's take a look at your Ford keys to the game tonight. Well, as we talked about, the three-point shooting, half of their field goal attempts are threes. And... Uh, that's what, um, you know, they're probably going to have to hit about 45% in this game. And there's one right there from Tucker Richardson. He had 16 points and was the team leader on Sunday at Clemson. Yeah, and how many teams for Syracuse? You know, they had two points with nine minutes to go against Virginia. Uh, they, they need a positive first four to eight minutes in this game to see the ball go through the hoop. They shot just 24% against Virginia a week ago inside the Dome. And just 17% from beyond the arc, which has moved back this year to 22 feet, one and three-quarter inches. Now, granted, if Virginia can make you look bad. I mean, it's, they're one of the best, consistently one of the best defensive teams. And that's a tough game out of the shoot for a, what's, you know, the youngest team Jim Beheim has ever had here, probably. 48-34 was the final a week ago. Beheim misfires. Dolajai pulls it down for the offensive board. As is tradition, fans inside the dome standing until the first bucket. Oh, the free throws coming up. Cummings picked up the foul for Colgate, Mike. Well, I, I think that's going to be a key, too. That you, you don't want to settle for outside shots. Uh, we talked about the core group for Col Colgate. But, you know, the first five, if you can get two of them in foul trouble, uh, that would really set their offense back. Orange only went to the free throw line seven times against Virginia and made three of them and Hughes Made all of those free throws. Well, I think they're gonna find tonight a little easier to get to the basket I mean that uh, Virginia pack line defense is very difficult to penetrate and get to the rim Jalen Carey with the first point of the game for the Orange, the sophomore from Harlem, New York who had just two points against the Cavs in the first game of the season here at the Dome. Long distance three. The miss from Burns. Spike for the loose ball. It's a held ball situation, and the arrow will favor Syracuse. Nice job that time. They got Raymond in the middle of that zone. And a better job blocking out. Great look from right behind the basket there, Mike. Yeah, I don't know if he's lucky he didn't get foul on that uh, coming over the uh, trying to come over the back. That was Cummings who hit the deck. And the foul will be against Sidibe. That's the first on him. Yeah, you know, if you got a if you got a big guy who's trying to put the ball on the floor. It's an easy charge to draw to just, you know, get underneath him. Colgate hung with the Clemson Tigers on Sunday. 14 lead changes in that game. They played them tough for about 35 minutes, and, and then uh, Tigers pulled away. But this is a stretch of three uh, Power 5 conference teams that they're playing, so they're challenging themselves early. And yeah, next game will be at Auburn for the Raiders. Carey knifing his way. Had it blocked and out of bounds. Getting back defensively, Ivan Auskis. There's a look, a good crossover, and you got it. You know, there's enough body that uh, Richardson got him to uh, kind of hold him down a little bit, allow the help side defense to come in. Ivan Auskis was the player of the year in the Patriot League a season ago, and Colgate steals it back. Here's Burns. 
Almost three minutes in, and the Orange still in search of their first field goal. That's a three for Colgate and Will Raymond. Well, and again, I have an Oscar. They're trying to get a guy right at the middle of the free throw line to try to work the ball inside and then kick it out for a three. Beautiful execution that time. Raymond's eighth all time in scoring in Colgate history. That's a little tension with uh, Syracuse, Tom. I mean, after coming off that last game, Dolajai able to save it to Hughes. Was 34 points, their fewest since 1945. Bayheim misses on the drive. Looking at an 0 for 6 start right now for uh, Syracuse, so their only point coming from the free throw line. That was a carry free throw. Collapsing defensively. Knocked out of bounds and out of the hands of Will Raymond, but it's going to stay with the Raiders. 15-58 to go in the first. And, you know, picked by a wide margin to be first in the Patriot League this year. Matt Langle, coach of the year, the last two seasons in the Patriot League. Ivanowskis couldn't handle that angle off the backboard. Syracuse needs to get something out on the break if they can. A steal, a turnover, a layup, uh, something to generate. Everything's been in the half court. This is Carey. Ivanowskis, the clearance for Colgate. Raiders haven't beaten the Orange since 1962. And that was at Manly Fieldhouse, up the road from the Dome. Shot clock is down to five. From the wing. Bayheim got the rebound on the miss by Richardson. They sealed off, uh, Syracuse sealed off the middle that time. Sidibe couldn't get it back. Cummings has to kick it out. Ivanowskis. Rebound Sidibe. 14.45 to go in the first half. It's 6-1. to one. And uh, we talked about seven of the eight field goal attempts so far by Colgate from behind the arc. But uh, they've done a nice job of uh, kicking it out. Second block of the game. This is, a, this is a Raider team. You look out there, you don't think rim protectors, but uh, some pretty nice work inside. So Gerard is into the game for the Orange. Carey with a conversation with his head coach right now. And to the bench. Hughes off the inbounds. Looking for a little bit of daylight. The Orange throw it away. Back to Colgate. We touched on it at the open. And, uh, when, you know, they need, they, they're looking to Hughes as the scene, basically senior, ready to redshirt junior. But uh, only 0 for 2 in this game in a turnover. Fourth turnover of the first half for Syracuse. Ferguson. Long distance three. Yeah, we talked about the, the new three-point line this year is uh, the international three. It's been moved out, and I don't think it's going to phase a lot of guys. I mean, that was well behind the line. Dolajai trying to create some space. To well, there's something that Syracuse hasn't had the last few years that big time inside score but uh, nice high low action that time between Dolajai and uh, Sidibe Raymond almost lost the handle Gerard played 22 minutes off the bench against Virginia, had three points, was one of four from beyond the arc. Sidibe on the interior, forces it up and in. A couple of field goals for Barama Sidibe. Well, that time they, they gave him a clear out, got the right side all to himself and did a nice job of finishing. And those two makes by Sidibe 
who started, played 22 minutes against Virginia, but only had two points and two rebounds. Last year had a double-double against Colgate. Underneath, and an easy two. Well, you can tell that uh, this group has been together for a number of years, which you don't see a lot, in, uh, you know, especially in the power conferences. Um, but uh, they, they really are connected offensively and move the ball extremely well. Gerard turnaround. Averaged over 48 points per game in his senior high school season. All-time leading scorer in the state of New York. 4,000 points. That's more than G-Man back in the day in Connecticut. By a lot. Not by that much, Mike. I looked it up. <laughs> Had more than a thousand points in his senior season alone. Dolajai is going to pick up the foul. Second on Dolajai. He was the leading rebounder in the game against Virginia with nine. Had four points on a couple of field goals. He played the entire game against the Cavs as well. Raiders throw it out of bounds on the end line. Yeah, that's a little, just a little miscommunication that time. And Ivan Ossick went all the way out to the corner. The pass was looking for the short corner. Orange has a lot of scoring to make up from a season ago. But he behind on target. Straight away, rocking the rim for three. And that gets the crowd into it a little bit. That gets them fired up defensively. And uh, you know, we saw last year that he got off to a slow start. But... Uh, Shot over 40% from three in the ACC in, in league play. So things opened up for Bayheim. I think there was just, you know, the pressure of, of the name early on last year and the expectations. Bayheim made 47 total three-pointers last season. Quick hands from Hughes. Hesitation. Through the D. Back to Bayheim. Three ball. Well, you know what? Since Gerard's come into the game, he's given this team a lift. And you can just see the energy level go, you know, go up. He's gotten guys open looks. He challenged that time of the three-point shot. And he's averaged double figures every single year that he's been at Colgate, so very consistent. Um, but uh, after that 0 for 7 start by Syracuse, 4 of 6 over this last stretch. His career three-point percentage is best in school history for Raymond. 42% on the defensive end here. Bayheim on the drive. Oh, hold it. Over the top. Tips in. CD Bay. You got to like that move. CD Bay raises his hand up in the crowd and tries to get the score table's attention. 12-2 <laughs> oh. run over the last three minutes and change for the Orange. That's an NBA move. <laughs> Ivanauskas against the D Bay. The help came over from Dolajai. Shot clock is down to four for the Raiders. Cummings just needs to pump it up and hit. Uh, you, get that, you get that open look off the offensive rebound, especially against that zone. They were looking through the three. Syracuse did a nice job of forcing it into a two point shot, but still a score. So D Bay won power dribble and a basket. Calculating the angle in tight. Given you know Syracuse is shooting, they're probably, they may have to come start to come down and double team Sidibe. He's uh he's, he's gotten isolations down on that right block a few times. Eight points now for Sidibe. Raymond let the defender fly on by. Easy two, Will Raymond. Well, a couple of times inside that he has used that pump fake effectively, and Syracuse is going to have to keep their feet. Bayheim with the defender on his hip, and it'll stay down. A little fist bump on the way back for Buddy Bayheim. Oh, nice little mix, and then those two bombs that he hit set up the uh, little floater inside. So get the defense thinking about how to defend you. Eight points now for Bayheim on three of the left, three of seven shooting. It's going to stay with the Raiders. Gerard going to the floor for the Orange. Ivanauskas. 
substitutions. They have to work quickly. Only 10 seconds on the shot clock. The Dolajai to the bench for the Orange. Gurrier came in for the Orange. He wears number one. Edwards is in there as well, and Hughes pulls it off the rim. Here's Gerard. Behan. You know, Gurrier lost it on the baseline, Mike. You know, it's, it's funny, Tom, how, especially for a young team, when they taste some success offensively, their defense gets a lot more active, and it, it has been over this stretch. 17-15. You can see, look how far up that uh, the back line of that defense is extended. Syracuse to the NCAA tournament a season ago after going 20 and 14. Raiders were in the postseason tournament as well. Beat Tennessee, all they could handle in that, in that first round game. Maynard with that last bucket for Colgate. Only lost to Tennessee by seven in their first round game. Turn around, off the back iron. See Edwards, the freshman, needs to, and he'll just grow naturally, but uh, on the thin side right now. Traveling Ivan Oskis, player of the year in the Patriot League a season ago. 7.57 to go in the first half. It's the gate by one. Gets the orange might not like playing that early game especially with uh, a younger team against an, uh, you know a league opponent Virginia did the same thing to its next opponent James Madison allowed them only 34 points as well Orange get the scoring rolling here in the first half Bayhan has been a big part of it a couple of three-pointers Hughes shot clock is at four Rattles it home for three. It lies to Hughes. Almost dribbled himself into a shot <laughs> violation there, but uh, bailed himself out with a nice shot. First points of the evening for Hughes. And he needed to see the ball go through the basket. That the first points by players other than Beheim and Sidibe. Gerard down low. Here he to the floor, fighting for the loose ball with Maynard. Orange is going to keep it on the arrow possession. Here's a look, and we I'm, I'm really, this team has been a different team with Gerard in there, and uh, that's one that Gary has to, he has to finish, and uh, you know, but again, for him, he was 0 for 4 in that first game, so he needs a basket just for uh, mental health. Played 13 minutes against Virginia for Quincy Guerrier, the freshman from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Hughes on the drive. A couple of buckets from Hughes now in the first half. Latter stages of the first 20 between Colgate and Syracuse working on a 53-game winning streak against the Raiders. Almost threw it away. Beheim saves it on the baseline to Hughes. Gerard thought about three. Escape dribble. High rebound. Gurrier fighting for it. It is off of the orange and Colgate basketball. Well, and Colgate not getting as much out of the, getting that ball into the middle of the zone. Uh, Syracuse a lot more active. Told you that the Raiders made it to the NCAA tournament. First time since 96 for that program. Turnover on that last offensive sequence. And now as we go inside of six minutes to play in the first half, the Orange up by four. The Donald Forrell may be a name that people might remember from the, uh, in the 90s. Shot clock to four. 
Gerard. The soft touch for the newcomer. Yeah, nice when you can have your point guard uh, be able to finish like that. Nice little floater in the lane, so everything was sealed up, but knew that the uh, he had the clock on his back. First two points of the game for Joseph Gerard the third. Freshman from Glens Falls, New York, and Glens Falls High School. That's a three from Nelly Cummings. He's got five points in the first half. And now five made three-pointers on 15 attempts for Colgate. Three of five from beyond the arc for the Orange. Whistle before the shot by Gerard. Gurrier on an um, illegal screen. So Gurrier to the bench. Three-point lead for the Orange. Burns hoisting a three. And knocking it down, and we're tied at 24, Mike. In the first half, his first three. Yeah, the the three-point shot had gone away for about five minutes for the uh, Raiders, but uh, they found the range again in this stretch. Six made threes in the game now for the Raiders as Raymond came down with the board. They won 24 games a season ago and 13 in Patriot League play. And the thing was that they, they started out 5-5 five and five and then won their last eight. Dolajai got fouled in the process of trying to complete that alley-oop play. Ivan Oskis picking up the foul. His first from Colgate. They won that championship game in the Patriot League tournament on their home floor against Bucknell, the two-time defending champs prior to last year, 94-80. Wound up with a uh, 15 seed in the NCAA tournament. And the uh, third and fourth free throws of the half for the Orange. And of course. Colgate not going to get there much the way they're playing just because they're relying so much on the three-point shot. Dolajai at the free throw line. The junior from Slovakia with a couple of free throws. So this is an important four minutes for Colgate. You wanna, you've, you've played a nice first half up to this point, but you don't want to give up a, a kind of run to Syracuse. Richardson had to kick it back out. Three-point miss from Cummings. Ivan Oskis comes flying into the paint and bodies go everywhere. He's got his second personal. So a close game between the Orange and the Raiders. Syracuse by two late in the first half. Going to be a big part of it as well. Made it last Sidibe. year. Yep, Sidibe. Lost in the first round of Baylor, 78-69 in Salt Lake City, Utah. Around the perimeter, Bayheim. And now Hughes, teeing up a three ball. Dolajai, weak side. Bayheim needs help. He'll shoot. You know, the guy with the ball is pretty important, and you, should, you shouldn't be leaving him. But Bayheim looked around, there was nobody there. Everybody else was running in different directions. He is four of his last five in shot attempts. The Orange by four. They've led by as many as six. Colgate has led by as many as eight in this first half, and that was early on. It's the second uh, illegal screen they've had. First on Hughes. And that was, um, you know, Syracuse was going on a little mini run, and uh, that was uh, an important turnover for Colgate. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. Coach Beheim's taken this program to the NCAA tournament 34 times, nine of the last 11 years. And that included last year, but a loss in the first round. Inside a 10 of the shot clock for the gate. Ivanaskis, well defended by Sidibe. Bay. Beheim the board and the clearance. 
Good eye. Behind. Hughes tapped it, but right to Ivan Oskis. Both teams do a pretty nice job getting back in transition. I don't, I don't remember seeing a transition layup by either team in this game. So three or three feet behind the line and a miss from Richardson. Had his nose broken in the first game of the season, a win against NJIT. Hughes, free throw line. Little action on that one, some backspin. A little sack of sand up there on the rim. The iron was most kind, <laughs> Mr. Hughes. Uh, that's a trademark violation. <laughs> I asked Brand him. He said I could say that. Brando's going to want the tweet of the week now if he's watching. <laughs> I hope he tweets in. <laughs> Our colleague, Tim Brando. Shot clock was at 8. It was an entry pass to Ivan Oskis, but knocked away by Sidibe and a foul on the play. Second on him. Well, and those are the, the silly fouls that you want to you know, stay away from with the clock winding down. You know, he's not going to get that ball, so you know, just be solid, stay behind him. You're a good shot blocker. So Colgate into the bonus. Coach Matt Langle. That's an 88 percent shooting team from the free throw line. So uh, in the second half, if you Syracuse, and I, I got him. Announce your defense. You did get him. Um, but <laughs> you, if you're Syracuse, you don't want to get Colgate in, in the bonus early in the second half. In traffic and tight quarters for Sadibe, and he's going to earn some free throws. Ivan Askis was the closest man to him. Hey, here we go. Get a spot. And that's Get the up. third foul on him, Mike. Well, how about, uh, how about Sidibe? Eight points, eight rebounds so far in the first half. Great production from him. And they got him going early, throwing over the top. Shot only 39% from the line a season ago. Born in Mali in Northwest Africa. Played prep ball at St. Benedict's in New Jersey. Like, one thing you have to wonder with two fouls, you know, why was Ivanos in the ball game at the time? You know, you just save that other foul for the second half. He's still in the game now with 44 seconds on the clock of the first half. As Burns had to back it out and got it right back. Shot clock is at 10. Going to be Syracuse basketball. It was Richardson who couldn't handle the pass. And they called a foul on Richardson, too. That's the first one on Richardson, the sophomore from Flemington, New Jersey. Trying to fend off Dolajai Mike with the left arm, right in front of Coach Beheim. And the Orange is called a timeout. 44 years on that bench for the Hall of Famer. I can't, I can't even imagine, you know, they changed the name of the city from Syracuse to Bayheim. I mean, just, you know, I don't think, you know, between him and Coach K, um, you know, maybe Roy Williams at, uh, at North Carolina, that we'll see coaches stay that long in one place unless it's, a lesser mid-major school, you know, like a, a Bob McKillop at Davidson. Yeah, and Coach Beheim having a chance to coach his son Buddy in his sophomore season. Putting up some threes in the first half for the Orange, Mike Jeminski. Yeah, I thought pressure, pressuring a little bit early, but that first jump shot really got him going. And uh, not only showing the three-point range, but uh, I've been impressed, Tom, with, with his mid-range game. You know, people are pressing him out on, out on him on that three-point shot, and he's shooting that little floater nicely. Couple of three balls, double digits with ten points in the first half. Right now, the only player from either side with double digits. And that's after he struggled against Virginia, just one for eight from three-point distance for Beheim a week ago on this court. Happens to have his dad's signature on it as well. Jim Beheim Court, Syracuse, New York. 
Tom Worry, Mike Jaminski, final seconds of our first half, the Orange and the Raiders. Shot clock winding down for Dolezal, spinning, never got the shot away, but was fouled. Keegan records number 14 for Colgate first foul. Well, I think if you're if you're Matt Langle, you're probably happy. Well, you know, with Ivanos having the three fouls, you know, the, the one drawback. But uh, you know, with two made free throws here, Syracuse will almost have matched their total output against Virginia. So, you know, they're feeling a little better about themselves offensively. Orange with just three of seven from the free throw line. In that game against Virginia. And when you get stifled offensively like that, Mike, and struggle, admittedly, in the first few minutes of this game as well, the confidence they have gotten from starting to get a rhythm against Colgate in this first half, putting some points on the board, has to be enormous for the Orange. Yeah, and I think for, for this last 10 seconds, too, that if you're Jim Beheim, you really want to defend the three-point line. I, I think you can live with a two-point shot or a two-point make, but uh, you know you don't want to give them momentum going into the locker room at the half. They've made six three-pointers in the first half, has Colgate. Again, the Orange working on that 53-game winning streak. You go all the way back to the early 1900s, the 172nd meeting. And, and they played most of these games recently right here at the Dome. That's pretty cool that, you know, that Coach Beheim has, has kept that going, you know, in this free throw there. Watch for the kick out. Final seconds. Ivanovskis misses. And the clock runs out of the first half. So Coach Beheim of the Orange to the locker room up 31-25. Buddy Beheim is your leading scorer. After the first half, 10 points and a couple of threes. Colgate made 6-3. Tyler Ennis at the point guard position for the Orange as well. And the trend continues on the roster. Out of the corner for three. It's a misfire from Richardson. Let's see. Uh, let's, let, let's, might see a quick timeout. Uh, you know, Syracuse goes on a little mini run here and starts to widen the lead out. Bayheim front rim. Dolezal ends up with the basketball. Calling on Raymond. That's the second foul on Will Raymond. Bayheim on the inbounds. Wearing the same number his dad wore. Jim Bayheim, Syracuse class of 1966. Went from freshman walk-on to senior captain and played in the NCAA tournament as a senior. Pretty good, pretty good teammate named Dave Bing, too. Not a bad player in his own right. Dolajai off the backboard and good. First made basket of the game. He's got five in total. Retrieved by Burns. Shot clock is down to six. There's Cummings. Raiders crashing the glass and maintaining possession. Out of bounds off the orange. Off, it's now off an offensive rebound. The clock had reset down to 20. Nelly Cummings, the transfer from Bowling Green, who sat out last season. Ivanowskis, nowhere to go. Cummings, deep into the shot clock, back to Burns. This is on the three, Dolajai wants to run. Spins away from the defender! Double-fisted jam, Dolajai! Pretty impressive over-court play for the big dog. Nice handle. Matt Langle letting him play on. You know, after something like that, the crowd getting into it, they want to calm them down with a timeout. He has confidence in this group. Richardson, he's got a three. Another three off an offensive rebound. Broken nose and all. Came back and played in that game, too, after he broke it. 
Going to have to wear that face guard for a couple of weeks. I've played with a mask, and it is not an easy thing if you're not used to it. Here's a look, and uh, well, that's just, uh, this is pretty good handle. Usually for Jim Bayheim, you want him to give it up, but uh, he finished at the rack. Marek at the rack <laughs> for the jam. How about that view right behind the backboard? Richardson picked up the foul for a Colgate. His second. Quick discussion, Coach Beheim and the officials. That'll be repeated many times during the course of the season. The intensity of the ACC. And I thought that Syracuse a little sluggish defensively in the first 10 minutes of this game, but since then, that zone has been much more active. They will get another crack at Virginia in Charlottesville. That'll be January 11th, second meeting between the teams. Just the second game of the year for the Orange, and the shot clock is at 10 for Girard. Hughes, patience and poise, got the defender in the air and almost made the shot. That's a veteran move right there, Mike, to get Richardson in the air. Yeah, if you're, you know, for Richardson, if you get him to give up his dribble, you can challenge the shot, but you, you know, you, you can't invade his space. And smart play by that time by Hughes. Seven points of the game for Hughes as he steps to the free throw line. 74% from the stripe a season ago. Oh, you got him. I guarantee he cannot hear me, Mike. <laughs> uh, I'm almost sure of it. I took, I took the bolt the first half, and so you can, you know. <laughs> By the way, so great to be back on campus in the Carrier Dome, working alongside my good friend, the All-American from Duke, Mike Jaminski. Great to be here. Yeah, when I'm when I'm here with you, it's like uh, <laughs> under my name they should just put appearing also appearing as. <laughs> great passing by Colgate. Ivanovskis couldn't finish it, and then Beheim stole it. Gerard from Glens Falls. Wow. Well, we talked about the point for, the production he had in high school, and, uh, you know, he's getting them energy as a playmaker, but uh, he can do both things, and he got the steal there. <laughs> Laid it up on the rim for Sadibe. Yeah, and Matt Langle wanted to try to get it under the 16-minute mark, but he couldn't wait. Gerard the spark, a three-pointer. He deflected that ball at the defensive end, and then set up Sidibe. Ripping the ropes for his second three of the season, and then he puts it on a silver platter for Sidibe. It's our Toyota Tweet of the Week. Marek Dolajai with the play of the game a couple of moments ago with the spinning dribble. And the double-fisted rim rocker. Uh, so far, Colgate uh, one of seven for the half. Seven of 26, and now seven of 27 on three-point attempts for the Raiders. Touchdown pass to Hughes. They'd like to see a few more touchdown passes in this building this season as well, Mike. For Dino Babers in the football program. They're on the road against Duke this week. Gerard has a three in this game, the second. A Lorian honor of Division I college basketball. Won that championship game against Bucknell, two-time defending champs. And Jordan Burns had 35 points. Bucknell set a couple of big uh, NCAA tournament upsets in their career. Could be Kansas one year. Sidibe picked up his third personal, Mike. 15.30 to go in our second half. Yeah, I, you know, I think, you know, obviously you want to keep him in the game, um, but the Jim Dayline would take a double-double out of him every every time. You know, he's sitting there with 10 points, 10 rebounds right now. Shot clock is inside of 10. 
This is Burns, who had those 35 points in the title game a season ago in the Patriot League. He misses. The d able to gather it. Boy, they have, uh, they have not had many open looks from three in this second half. Just 11% from the floor in this half. Tell you, Colgate, Mr. Gerard may be earning himself some more playing time uh, uh, based on this game. He's been terrific. Although that was not the best pass of the evening by Gerard. Stolen by Burns. Taken back, Beheim. Hughes on the catch and release from Gerard. That was a good rush up the floor of that time, and and for Hughes, who had you know seen a big basket, really um, just shot that one in rhythm. Now four of eight on the game. He's got 11 points, Mike, and two of four from beyond that new arc in men's college basketball this year. Back to 22 feet, one and three quarter inches. Ivanovskis against the double team. Unable to beat it. Sidibe hustles for the board. Yeah, nice job of uh, Sidibe staying down that time and not fighting on the punt fake. Gerard. Jolajai preserves the possession. Hughes is open. Well. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a tough miss. It was the same shot that he knocked down earlier. That was a good swing of the basketball by the Orange. Sidibe also had a double-double last year against Colgate with 11 points and 10 rebounds. He's got 13 boards in this game after having just two points and two rebounds in 22 minutes against Virginia a week ago. Well, Ivan Oskis has had to be a little careful, too, with the three fouls that he had. Beheim got in trouble under the basket, turns it over. Richardson stolen back by Hughes. Gerard. <laughs> he, is, he is fearless as far as pulling the trigger on the on the jump shot. Well, you Raymond Hughes plucked it from behind. Raymond didn't even know he was there. Boy, Hughes covered a lot of ground to get that block. The only thing he didn't do was come up with the ball, but a great defensive recovery. I mean, he thinks, you know, he, he, he thinks he's got a layup. Dolly Jai anticipation. Knocked it away to Hughes. Beheim trying to fill the lane. Fall away. Thirteen, uh, fifteen to three run now in that second half. Only three points for the Raiders. Hustle by Gerard, who went to the deck. And the lead is now 46-28. Gerard and Dolajai are going to come out of the game. Braswell's in there, number 20. You know, that last three might have been a little quick, but I think uh, Gerard may become a fan favorite here pretty quickly, Tom. One for four on three-point attempts for Gerard. Dolajai out of the game. He's got seven points and six rebounds. That's a three-pointer for the Raiders. Eight of 30 from beyond the arc for Colgate tonight. Yeah, I said I, I thought they had to shoot uh, between, you know, there's still plenty of time left in the game, but uh, I thought they had to shoot between 40 and 45 percent. All net for Godin. First hoop of the night. First hoop of the season. So, for the freshman from New Bedford, Massachusetts. Yeah. Some confidence. Yeah. 
The offensive foul against Richardson. So the Q's shot to the 40. 18 and turning up the heat in the second half with Dolajai Mike down the lane. Yeah, that's a spark and uh, can't say enough, you know, Bayheim with a nice play there. This guy right here, Joe Gerard, doing it all, the steals. Knocking down the threes. And then this beautiful lob to uh, Sadiba. He's having a great game in his own right. But uh, this game was manageable at the half, Tom, with uh, Colgate only down six. But uh, Syracuse done a nice job in the, the first uh, eight minutes here of blowing this thing open. Gerard on that orange bench. For the game, Syracuse shooting 47%. With 11.15 to go in the second half. Elijah Hughes, 11 points. He's one of three Syracuse players with double digits. Sadibe with 10. Buddy Beheim has 12. Shot clock is down to eight for Hughes. You know, Tom, you mentioned that rematch with Virginia. I'm be curious to see how that game plays out because these are going to be two different teams. One, you know, that time both Virginia and Syracuse. So glad that you're with us, Tom Wormy, along with Mike Jaminski, the All-American from Duke, our outstanding ACC College Hoops production crew with you from Syracuse, New York, and the Carrier Dome. Home of Orange basketball since 1980. And that's a Raider three. Ferguson. Orange losing three of their top five scorers from a season ago in Battle, Brissett, and Frank Howard. You know, within that 10 minutes, Tom, you know, with a, a team that shoots the three like this, that Syracuse can't go to sleep right now. Good eye. Shot clock whittles down to five. Braswell. The turnaround is too strong. Outlet Cummings. A little bit out of control. Lost the handle. Couldn't connect with Moffitt. And it's back to the orange. Yeah, it didn't have numbers that time. Probably should have pulled it back. Waited for some help. Might, might have had some wing shooters come behind. Just about 26% shooting for Colgate in this game. Hughes, turnaround over the smaller defender, but Moffat the rebound. They've done a better job of taking Cummings than a little bit closer to the basket. A big size advantage there. Shot clock's at 10. They have to go back out to Ferguson. Braswell off his fingertips. Second chance, Colgate. He's the only Raider in there against three. Actually, <laughs> Syracuse and came out with the ball. That is into the Colgate bench, out of bounds, and Syracuse basketball. Yeah, I think he was expecting a spot up shooter in the corner. Instead, somebody on the bench got the pass. So Gurrier, one of those three fresh faces we showed you earlier in this game into the lineup for the Orange. He's a freshman from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Did not score in 13 minutes off the bench against Virginia. Hughes, low to Sidibe. He'll finish off the play. Twelve points, thirteen rebounds for Sidibe. He wants to play a home and home with Colgate every year. It has been 53 in a row in the win column for the Orange against the Raiders, and it's Beheim on the strong drive to the bucket at 14 points. Almost, almost matches the Clemson North Carolina drought up in Chapel Hill. That was the last opponent on Sunday for this Colgate team. And a loss on the road in Clemson, South Carolina. They lost 81-68. Bayheim stepping back. 
and knocking it down. Buddy Mayheim, 17 points. Three made threes, and he leads the Orange in scoring. Let the defender step on by, and he hits the shot. Mayheim. Players on the roster this year. Sidibe has contributed as well. Buddy Beheim on the bench right now, but 17 points. First time he's been out of the game. Six rebounds, Mike. Three made three-pointers. And he's 7 of 14 overall yep. shooting tonight in the Dome. Oh, uh, and there's a little moment between uh, father and son. And, uh, you know, it's always, always coaching him up. You can just see that confidence level rise when he hit that first shot. And he's added that, uh, that, added that mid-range game as well. Blocked by Edwards and out of bounds. Jesse Edwards, the freshman from Amsterdam, Netherlands. Jordan Burns. Six points for Jordan Burns, who averaged over 16 per game as the leading scorer a season ago for this Colgate team. Well, they really locked in on him uh, in this game. Only two of nine shooting, two of eight. Only second made three. And uh, he's going to be a guy who's going to be, has to be a big-time scorer for them in league play. Talked about their tourney game, Mike, against Tennessee. He had 32 points in that game and made eight three-pointers. Deep in the shot clock for the Orange, Gurrier. Bounces out of bounds and back to Colgate. we watching Jim. He's got a 21-point lead, and he's as animated <laughs> as if it's a one-point game. Second most wins in all of Division I basketball behind Coach K at Duke. Well, and he needs to get some of those wins that were taken away back. I'm sorry. I, I, I disagree with that decision. You'll get no argument here, Mike, and it looks like he's closing in on career win number 947, officially. Maynard the foul. What a career, though. 44th year. Some symmetry to that, 44, such a historic number in all of the sports programs at Syracuse University. Magical year with Carmelo Anthony as a freshman. 2003. And Jerry McNamara yeah. is on the bench. Yep. He's one of the assistant coaches from that team. And that's Edwards with the bucket. Too. I mean, he's, he's a key smart jump shot away from another national championship against Indiana. Good point. You're right, Mike. Back in 87, there's a timeout on the floor. Talking about championship tradition, Syracuse has been to that title game three times. It's Jerry McNamara. 87, lost to Indiana. 96, lost to Kentucky. But... Beat Kansas 81-78 at the Superdome in 2003. How about Kentucky last night, Mike? Against Evansville? Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you go young, and, you know, I think that, you know, everybody thought that that John Calipari had the, the launch code, <laughs> you know, when he I went mean, with, the, you know, and there's the championship banner and uh, Carmelo's retired jersey right ne next to it. But, you know, since going that route with the one and dones. They won it once. You know, Mike Krzyzewski's won it once, you know, with that group. 2015 in, yeah. in Indianapolis. Yep. So yeah. it's it's been it's been the older teams that have been winning. You know, whether it be Villanova or North Carolina. Virginia from last Virginia year. Virginia from last year. You know, all older teams that have been together for a while. Kyle Guy, Ty Jerome, Jack Salt.
score of that basket. Howard Washington. It's been a long road back for Howard Washington from that right knee injury suffered in practice. Burns picked up the foul. Washington at the line. Only played in three games a season ago after that injury in 2018. Inside of five minutes to go in regulation. 63-40, the Orange on top of Colgate. Trying to extend that winning streak to 54 straight against the gate. 126 all-time wins in the series. This is edition number 172. Hughes couldn't connect with his teammate Jesse Edwards. So it didn't start out all that great for the Orange, Mike. They struggled. Yeah, I mean, it was just the, you know, the optic of that first game and how overwhelming it was. And I, I think it stunned this young group, and they just needed to get up early. And the, uh, he was inside the uh, block charge line. Cummings at the free throw line for Colgate. You know, it's, it's also nice that, you know, that, that Jim Beheim has kept, you know, when he can. Like, they'll play Georgetown this year. He's kept some of those, the old Big East rivalries um, alive. And that one may be the most intense of all. Yeah, it's December 14th, Mike, at Georgetown. As they, uh, since Georgetown closed down Manly Fieldhouse with a win. And <laughs> <laughs> Famous quote from John Thompson. Mr. Thompson. Yeah. Although, Syracuse beat Georgetown 72-71 as Ty's battle hit a jumper with two and a half seconds left in regulation. That was on December 8th last season against Georgetown. And they had that win against number one Duke on the road in overtime, Mike, for this Orange team, 95-91. First win against the number one team since 2013 when they beat Louisville. That was also on the road. You just never know in the ACC. It just, it's very hard to predict. Well, for those of you who watched it, um, you know, at halftime, talking to Jim Beheim being interviewed, saying, you know, the top five are going to be in the top five or ten every year. The middle five are probably going to be in the top 25. And the bottom five can beat you on any night. Yeah, seven teams from the ACC made the tournament last year, but three of them, Mike, were number one seeds. They're still out in the open floor. Oh. Second effort missed from Burns. And now Washington on the run. Little no look action in a basket. Gurrie for the Orange. Washington, nifty dribble and no look. Gurrie. Well, the game changer tonight, Mike, for the Orange. Buddy Beheim, 17 points to lead the way. Hughes has 14. Sadibe has his third career double-double. Had a double-double last year against Colgate. Does it again tonight. 12 points, 14 rebounds, and that leads the Orange on the boards. I really, I'll, I'll go back there. I, I think that things changed for Syracuse when Gerard came in in the first half. And there's a shot of Bayheim on the bench. Bayheim's plural. And, uh, but, uh, no, I, 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 he, was, he was a real spark for this team, and uh, you know, I think he's uh, earned himself. It'll be interesting to see how his minutes progress uh, in the, in the uh, you know, non-conference part of the schedule. Made his second three of the season tonight against Colgate. Certainly not the same defensive pressure that Virginia applies. But overall tonight, a more complete performance by the Orange, although... There'll be some free throws coming up for the Raiders. Well, this is this, this is a game basically that now you you know you just 
you learn from the Virginia game. You know, obviously you're going to keep that tape and you're going to, you know, use it later on. But uh, for right now, you just you put it in the rearview mirror and uh, take what you can out of this game. Auburn's the next opponent for Colgate. And then Seattle coming up for the Orange. And they'll play Cornell. And the other son, Jimmy, a junior at Cornell. And that game's on November 20th here at the Dome. That'll be quite a night as well for the Bayheim family. Wife Julie, daughter Jamie. I was going to say, yeah, Julie, Julie's got to be really he's torn a tough one. When, those, when those two are on the court together. That's a tough one. Daughter Jamie, the basketball manager at the University of Rochester after playing last year for that team. And Jimmy, again, he's the junior at Cornell, and they play here at the Dome November 20th. Another longtime rival. In fact, Colgate is the most frequent opposition in the history of Syracuse basketball. That's Maynard. Jumper for Colgate. They've been playing college basketball here in Syracuse, New York since 1900. In fact, that's how far back this rivalry with Colgate goes. Well, that was the thing that that 34-point performance was the lowest scoring game since 1945. That was a loss against Temple. Only scored 31 points in that game. It'll be a distant memory after tonight, though, Mike. Yep. Yep. Up by 18, 68-50, and some freshman impact on the court tonight for Coach Beheim and the Orange with less than two minutes to play. Well, here's, you know, it started right here with that, uh, with that three. And then uh, outside shot by Gnai, getting, you know, giving him some confidence. And then Gary, that was, you know, I was, I was talking to Adrian Autry, the assistant coach for uh, for Jim, and uh, they're very high on him. Uh, they just needs he just needs to get, you know get some confidence and some playing time like any other freshman. Gadine's got two. Gary's got five points tonight. Gerard also with five, and that's one for four from beyond the arc. Braswell. Edwards, second chance, Orange. Washington whips it inside. Knocked away from Garrier by records. You know, it, you know it's, uh, it's all, all you want to see is growth. I mean, there's nothing that jump, jumps off the board other than, than, for me, the energy that Gerard put out there. But, you know, this is where I, I hate that term garbage time. It's, it doesn't exist. You know, the, for these guys, it's a chance to grow as players. And, um, you know, it's, it's any, any minutes you get on the floor or goal. Coach Beheim's going to get his 947th career victory in 44 years on the orange bench. Some discrepancy here, and the officials are going to meander towards the scorer's table. They're checking on the shot clock, which right now reads one. Lee Cassell, Mike Roberts, Trey Styons, an admirable job tonight in the stripes. Well, maybe not in the estimation of Coach Beheim, although he is going to win the game tonight. Well, and, up by 18. You know, when we talked about the the uh, the defense as well, and uh, only three personal fouls for Syracuse in the second half, and really doing a good job shutting Colgate down, especially from three. Orange hadn't lost in the series since 1962. It's not going to happen tonight. Led by as many as 24. There is a review going on. Efforting the review. Keep an eye on the shot clock. That was Washington on the drive. Records had the block of Guerrier. It looks like it might have expired before it actually hit out of bounds. But it's still, they're going to keep it at, keep it at one. Time for a catch and shoot. They tried to go up top to Edwards, and that will be an official shot clock violation. 
You need more than .3 seconds on the clock for a catch and shoot. On that shot clock. That's Zach Light, number two for Colgate. Tucker Richardson comes out. So does Jordan Burns. Minute and a half to go. Once again, Mike, always a thrill to work with you here at the Carrier Dome. Oh, I'm I'm in the presence of royal here. <laughs> I mean, we're you know we're sitting right behind the uh, right right in front of where the Syracuse broadcast team, which has spawned so many great broadcasters, and uh, you know you walk in the building and I don't even exist. It's it's so much fun to be here. Full disclosure, class of '91, but it's so great to. There's Matt Park, who we say has one of the greatest jobs in the world as the voice of the Orange. That foul was on Edwards for Syracuse. Matt just one of the long lineage of broadcasters here at Syracuse University. I'm just happy to be in the same paragraph, never mind sentence. And the young men from WAER, the and it's a big campus radio station. That's a big gig. I mean, yeah. If you can, you, you know, you get. Oh, in I couldn't there. get near that. But the guys yeah. who were guys and women who were here while I was here, Jonathan Hoppy, on the play-by-play -play tonight for WAER, and now just about a minute to go. And this one was only a six-point game at halftime, 31-25, but it's all orange in the second half, and a confidence boost really for this team tonight against Colgate, Mike. Yeah, it was first five minutes of that second half that really. Uh, you know, pull away. The Edwards, a little mid-range on the baseline. It'll be the first win of the season for the Orange. And the record will go to one and one. And I would bet that Jim Beheim would be more, more pleased with the defense that his team played. You know, in, especially in guarding the three-point shot with the zone. You know, the 70 points, certainly a big <laughs> a, a big plus from the Virginia game. Up from 34 a week ago. And they held Colgate under 30% shooting from the floor as a team. Final 10 seconds for the first Orange victory of 2019-2020. And win number 947 for the Naismith Hall of Fame coach Jim Beheim. 72-54 is the final from the Dome G-Man as the Orange gets the victory. Yeah, and it, you know, in talking to the coaching staff, um, they really couldn't put too much emphasis on the Virginia game. Uh, you know, as we said, not, a lot of the coaches didn't like the fact that they're playing a, an ACC game right out of the chutes, you know, especially for a young team like this. So, you know, you look at the game film, you, you know, try to pick some positives out of it, you look at some other things just so the young guys can learn, and then, you know, come out, and I, I thought they, they, were, they were feeling the effects of that game in the first probably eight minutes of this game. Definitely. But then they started to roll offensively, 